made it hard for me. I'm going to try to stay on the five minutes. So I'm Hernan Lopez Fernandez. I'm in ecology and evolutionary biology and in PITE. Um, yeah, I should show you my slides, right? Um, uh, I'm also the curator of fishes at the Museum of Zoology. <clears throat> and I work mostly in South and Central America. This little guy works if you want to wander around. The right, yeah. The right hand. Okay. Oh, the slides. like that. There you go. So the reason I work there is that, as you can see, those fishes are pretty amazing. But also because South and Central America have the largest fish diversity anywhere on the planet, marine or freshwater. I mostly work with, with freshwater fishes. As of right now, we have over 6,000 species of fishes with an estimate of nearly 9,000. Just to put that in a little bit of perspective, that represents more than 20% of all fishes close to 10% of all vertebrates. So I argue, especially on grants and in my classes, that if you don't study the evolution and ecology of neotropical fishes, you don't really know anything about vertebrate evolution or ecology. So there you go. Um, uh, now, beyond, the, beyond that, the other thing is that we, we work a lot in the field and we do a, a lot of exploratory uh, field work trying to actually find and, dis and describe this diversity through this thing that I call targeted exploration. And one of the things that becomes immediately evident when you work in the neotropics is that beyond that diversity, there's under some extensive human impact on fishes and the watersheds where they live. Those impacts come from deforestation, from hydroelectric dams, from mining, from contamination, from different pollutants and things like that. And so this is very difficult to confront because how do you conserve a diversity that you barely know anything about? So when we think about what research is needed for sustainability of fishes and water in the neotropics, we need pretty basic stuff from taxonomy because we don't even know what fishes we're looking at or their geographic distributions, but then we need to understand much better what their ecological requirements are, what their evolutionary history is, even though it doesn't sound like something directly linked to, to conservation. I'll try to show you a little bit about that later. But also, what are the direct and indirect impacts that we are having on this diversity that we barely know? So my research program tries to tackle all of these things in a somewhat logical way without pretending to address every single one of those questions. But we basically base everything on field work and very importantly on collections based research. So one of the things that is absolutely essential in our research is to build and use and share natural history collections for this work. So we do things from describing biodiversity and inferring uh, phylogenetic relationships uh, using molecular and morphological data to analyzing the timing, rates, and patterns of lineage and phenotypic diversification in the biodiversity of, of neotropical fishes. We describe adaptive correlations between ecology and morphology. We study the effects of evolutionary history and adaptation on species interactions and community assembly and things like that, for example. But also, based on all, the, all that information and our field experience, we try to assess to the extent that we can, and in, often in collaborations like ones with Karen, um, what are the human impacts on, on, on the fish diversity, and to the extent that we can, we try to bring attention to them and, and, and promote their conservation. And that's one of the things that is, is only a portion of what we do, but it's been a very interesting experience. I'm, I'm an evolutionary biologist. I didn't start as a conservation biologist, and in many ways I don't consider myself one. But this uh, work has given us the opportunity to formally expose this incredible diversity, particularly in, in, a, in a river in Guyana, where we discovered some rates of endemism and evolutionary history that are truly extraordinary and unique. That work got noticed by the World Wildlife Fund in the Guyana Shield, and through them, we've gotten the opportunity both to talk to the press and to directly communicate with authorities and people in Guyana, as well as participate in other surveys, and now we're also exploring the possibility of, of looking at, at sustainable aquarium uh, fisheries and things like that. Um, we have ongoing collaborations addressing all these things. Um, most recently, we're collaborating with, with Karen at SEAS and with Aline Cotel at Engineering to try to take a multidisciplinary approach to assessing the impact of gold mining on the Guyana fishes. And just to close by, to close with this, 
I teach uh, one course in its lab, Biology of Fishes. It's a very exciting course because I can get to talk about fishes nonstop and students have to listen to me. <laughs> and uh, also, I'm very excited about a course Karen and I just developed as a transformative learning program course at the bio station in which we're going to teach um, U of M students that take either ecology of fishes or biology of fishes about fishes in Michigan's changing environments. And we're gonna focus that not only on biology, but in conservation, natural history, curation, and science communication. Thank you.